Hey everyone, it's Imagineering Week here on Thingamavlogs, and I am a big fan of Imagineers. As a matter of fact, I had a really cool opportunity once to sit down with Bob Gurr and Marty Scalar, who are two very famous Imagineers. It was a really amazing moment, and the thing we actually spoke about was the 1964 World Fair and how that influenced Disneyland. If you guys have seen the movie Tomorrowland, then you might be familiar with the World Fair because that's where the main character goes to display his rocket pack. The 1964 World Fair is particularly of interest to Disney fans because it was the first time that Disney tested and perfected his animatronics. Walt, being the clever man that he was, used this opportunity to get big companies with a lot of money to fund further research and development that he would display at the World Fair, which later he would then use to implement into the parks into new attractions and rides. In the end, there were four main attractions at the World Fair that ended up making it into the parks. The first one was It's a Small World, presented by Pepsi. Our exhibit called It's a Small World is a salute to the United Nations Children's Fund. The ride itself was a salute to UNICEF and all of the world's children, and it contained the now famous Sherman Brothers song, It's a Small World After All. The attraction was so successful that it was then implemented into both Disneyland and later Disney World. The second big attraction that came out of the World's Fair was Progress Land, which was funded by General Electric and featured the Carousel of Progress. In Act One, the audience meets an audio animatronic family. The time is just before the turn of the century. The idea behind this attraction was to showcase technological advancement through the years in order to encourage further technological advancement into the future. As a matter of fact, Walt actually wanted Progress Land to be a land inside of the Magic Kingdom. Instead, we got Epcot. So technically, we got a whole theme park out of it. But the actual Carousel of Progress does reside inside of the Magic Kingdom. Another large attraction was the Ford Magic Skyway. The attraction featured 50 motorless Ford vehicles which transported patrons on a track. Now, I know what you're thinking. That sounds a lot like Autopia. But in reality, the track moved patrons through different dioramas, which ended up getting placed in Disneyland. And you can see those when you ride the train. But in fact, the ride did inspire the people movers at Disney World. And finally, the last attraction resided within the Illinois Pavilion. There, Walt created an Abraham Lincoln animatronic, which stunned crowds. The coolest part was that it recited the Gettysburg Address. It blew minds. Obviously, that attraction ended up inspiring the great moments with Mr. Lincoln that we see in both parks. All of the attractions were groundbreaking, and in a very short amount of time, the technology available for theme park attractions skyrocketed. And that's the legacy of the 1964 World Fair and its impact on Imagineering, and thus its impact on the Disney theme parks. Because it just goes to show that one little spark of inspiration can lead to a great big beautiful tomorrow. In the comments below, I want you to let me know which one of those four attractions is your favorite to experience today. Because they were so powerful that they still exist today and you can go visit them. So great moments with Mr. Lincoln, It's a Small World, The People Mover, or The Carousel of Progress. Which one is your favorite? Let me know down there. We'll see you next time guys. Bye!